Westerners are increasingly scared of traveling to China as stress of detention rises. Jeff Wasserstrom is a self-proclaimed China specialist who is seriously considering never returning to China. At least, he says, not while President Xi Jinping is in power. The American professor who for decades made multiple trips a year to China and was last there in 2018 hasn't focused, focused his career on Tibet or Taiwan, lightning road issues <laughs> which attract Beijing's ire at lightning quick speed. But he has written about cultural diversity and student protest in mainland China and appeared on panels with the people who say the Communist Party is clearly upset with. Three years ago, that made the California-based academic wonder if his visa application to China might be rejected. Today, it makes him consider whether crossing the board risks his in, in indefinite, arbitrary detention. The chance of that outcome, the Wasserstrom says, might be pretty minimal, but the consequences were so grave. Those detain detained can't be locked for rocked it up for years without con contact with their families or a trial date. He is not willing to gamble. And he is not alone. More than a dozen academics, NGO workers, and media professors CNN spoke to with within pre-COVID times regu regularly traveled to China, said they were unwilling to do this once the pandemic restrictions lifted over fears for their personal safety. Several in the international business community said they would significantly modify their behavior while outside China to avoid attracting the eye of authorities in the country where they need to do business. The dramatic detention of the handful of foreigners in recent years has instilled a deep fear in some people, especially those with politically adjacent occupations. As President Xi breathes a culture of nationalism and for forges increasingly hostile relations with the Western government, some fear some fear that if a diplomatic spot of between their government and Beijing occurred while they were in China, they could become a target. Many cite the detention of two Canadians in China in December 2018 as a turning point in their thinking. Mark Koprig, an an NGO worker and a former diplomat, and Michael Spavor, Spavor, who organized a trip to North Korea, including for NBA player Dennis Rodman, were detained just after Huawei Hua Hua executive Meng Wanju was arrested in Vancouver on charges filed in the United States. Their detentions has have been characterized as a bargaining chip to help leverage Meng's release, an accusation Beijing denies. The two Canadian detained in China, Michael Kovrig and Michael Sparov, Bavop. 
Last August, Chinese Australian TV anchor Chang Wei Lei was also detained amid amid worsening ties between Beijing and Canberra. Chang's detention was all the more surprising given she worked for the state media channel CGTN. All three are f- facing charges of spying. Gordon Matthews, a professor of anthropo- anthropology living in Hong Kong, says some of his colleagues at the Chinese University of Hong Kong who have devoted their lives to China were exploring pursuing new lines of academic inquir- inquiry to avoid visiting the mainland. William Ni, an American who works for NGO China Human Rights Defenders, falls into the category, category of foreigners unwilling to travel to China and says he knows many others with a lower risk profile profile than the two detained Canadians who have made the same judgment. It's not it's not really a question really a question on the off. What are the things I have been doing that may have contributed to my getting detained? It's also a question of what is my nationality? What have the politicians uh, from my country have been saying? Says Ni. If they are willing to arbitrarily detain someone who was a very moderate, uh, thoughtful academic or a think tank type of person, he added, then it's difficult to see how how anyone can feel safe. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs said the so-called, so-called increased risk in arbitrary detention of foreigners in China was completely inconsistent inconsistent with the fact. China has always protected the safety and the rest made rights and the interest of foreigners in China in accordance with the law. The minister in the statement in response to CNN's inquiry. On the internet and social media, many foreigners share their experiences of working and living in China saying that China is one of the safest countries they have ever lived in and it's safe even when walking alone at night. The statement added that in fact Meng Wanzhou's experience in Canada was a typical case of arbitrary detention and we hope she can return to China as soon as possible. The level of risk. In June, a business advisory council to the U.S. Statement State Department issued a report titled "Hostage Diplomacy in China," seen by CNN, which cites the two Canadians' cases as a primary reason why firms should be more careful when sending employees to China. Academics, former diplomats, and think tanks across the world have similarly, similarly, similarly signed open letters expressing concern over what the co- two detentions mean for them. Last month, U.S. President Joe Biden, commenting on the Canadian case, told reporters, "Human beings are not." Battering chips. Bartering chips. We are going to work together till they get their safe return. Thomas Nullist, a risk analyst at Hillsend Associate, says he has seen an increase in demand from multinational companies seeking guid- guidance on matters of detention risk mitigation 
and response protocol in China in recent years. Non-risk for the average business person, traveler or student, the risk of detention is low. However, he added that a number of factors, factors increase the risk of being detained in China, including holding dual citizenship, having a government background, or being politically connected, or involve, involvement in se sensitive activity. Between 2009 and 2020, more than 50 cases involving foreigners detained in police custody or prevented from leaving China have appeared in media reports, according to New List. Of those, 28 were involved in what his firm deemed to be deemed to be deemed to be sensitive activity. Some activities, such as involvement with North Korea or work in human rights advocacy, were clearly sensitive. Others, such as conducting geological or historical research, were less obviously politically sensitive, he said. Other cases included foreigners taking drugs in China, where dealing narcotics can still result in capital punishment, while a handful involved, involved being approached and questioned. Three Canadians have been sens sentenced to death on narcotics charges since relations between Ottawa and Beijing soars sword although china denies politics affect the sentences exit ban ba bonds there is another form of detention in china that often doesn't involve in jail or even committing a crime it comes in a form of the an exit ban Legal under the Exit and Entry Ad Administration Law adopted in 2012 for unsettled civil cases in China. Sometimes security officials will visit people to inform them they are subjected to exit bans. Other times it's not evident till a person tries to leave the country. Usually Recipients can live in their own apartments and move around their community freely. China itself becomes a giant prison they cannot leave. In recent years, the bonds have increasingly been used on foreigners, including on U.S., Australian, and Canadian citizens who face no charges in China. A number of ethically Chinese U.S. citizens, in particular, have been burned from leaving China, es essentially kept as hostages in to lure their Chinese relatives living abroad to return to the country to settle businesses and legal dispute. American citizens are too often being detained as de facto hostages in business disputes or to coerce family members to return to China, says James P. McGovern, a U.S. Democratic Gro congressman and chairman of the Bipartisan Bipart Congressional Executive Commission on China. But they are not exact exclusively used on those of Chinese ethnicity. ethnicity. Here from ch Australian journalists after ex evacuation from China. Bill Biltold and Mike Smith, two Australian journalists working in China, fled the country last September. 
after learning X bonds had been placed on them. They sought refuge in their country's democratic missions in Beijing and Shanghai, while Canberra negotiated with Chinese officials to allow them to leave. The standoff lasted for five days before the bonds were lifted. The men were told they are persons of interest in an I investigation into Chang Lei, the Chinese Australian arc anchor for state broadcaster CGTN, detained earlier last year. In February 2019, Richard O. Halloran became the first Irish citizen to be the subject of the Chinese ex ban according to his legal team. The father of four had traveled to Shanghai to sell a business dispute involving fraud allegations against the shareholder in the aviator aviation leasing firm he worked for. Shareholder Min Ji Dong was charged with defrauding Chinese investors of some $70 million. But when O. Halloran got to the airport, he discovered he was bonded from leaving China and compelled to be a witness in Min's criminal case. During that process, Oha Loren was required to visit, the, visit an immigration office every few months to have its ex ban extended, without being told why, why he was being prevented from leaving or what speci specifically was needed from him. His lawyers said he had nothing in writing. Min's case concluded in March 2020 and he is now in prison with no chance of appeal. Richard O'Halloran and his family who 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 ha he has been separated from two years. O'Halloran's ex Ban was finally lifted in January, but to complete what member of the European Parliament of for Dublin, Barry Andrews, has called his Kafkaesque nightmare. When O'Halloran went to the airport, hoping to get home for his son's 14th birthday, he was stopped in the game. He remains in China. Unlike the US, Australia, the UK, and Canada, Ireland has no obvious clash, clash, clash with the Chinese government. The Irish government official travel advice, travel advice for China now warned on individual, their family, or on employer can be subject to an ex ban if they are connected to a legal matter or business dispute. The U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory last December, saying China arbitrarily enforces local laws, including by carrying out arbitrarily, arbitrary or wrongful detentions and through the use of ex bonds on U.S. citizens to, among other reasons, gain bargaining leverage over foreign government. Knowledge to say the ex bonds were not uncommon in cases involving business dispute. It's crucial that companies understand the circumstances when an ex bond may be applied, such as during, during a significant business dispute, as exposure can sometimes be avoided, he says. 
China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs <laughs> said Wuhan Lauren was obliged to cooperate with the Chinese judicial authori authorities in recovering the asset involved in the case involving the company he represents. Wuhan Lauren has freedom has freedom of movement during his stay in China and all legal rights are fully protected in accordance with the law, the statement added. Financial Opportunity In 2020, China became the world's largest recipient of foreign direct investment, with flows into the country rising 4% to $163 billion. With China, with China reducing barriers to investment and being the only major global economy to grow last year, doing business there has become even more vital. For many, rare retribute fusions for ge geopolitical skirmishes and the threat of ex bonds Funds when things go wrong are not a serious deterrent. One U.S. based analyst, analyst who regu regularly worked in China said she wasn't concerned about getting into the country from the political standpoint. In fact, she said her community is itching to go for research and invest investing purposes once the pandemic per permits travel there again. Fund flow, flow is still positive and strong into China, she said. So if you are investing, it's difficult to take a quarterly trip. Now Biden is in office. She is hoping for a smoother experience for American citizens than during the volatile, volatile years under former President Donald Trump. Chinese, Chinese President Xi Jinping with then U.S. Vice President Joe Biden inside the Great Hall of the people on December 4, 2013 in Beijing, China. James Smith, a Canadian businessman who has operated a factory in the southern city of Guangzhou for decades, said he is not deterred from operating in China, but is, is always mindful of, of the unique risk involved in working there. He asked to use a pseudonym, pseudonym for this piece to avoid the retributions in China for his comment. When I'm in China, I don't go out. I don't fracturize, fraternize. I don't go out to bars, he said. You know, there's too much to lose, so my life in China is very small and I want to keep it that way because, you know, I've heard the horror stories. I mean, it's a pretty scary world. I just, want, I just don't want to even have any part of that. One ethically, ethnically Chinese financial executive who does businesses in China and travels on his U.S. passport says, says that while most people here encounter encounters in the business world still want to work on the mainland, they are increasingly modifi modifying what they share on sh social media and discuss with friends while outside the country to protect their safety and business opportunity, he asked not to be named for security reasons. In Hong Kong, where he is based, 
this has become a particular issue due to the national security law which was imposed on the city by Beijing last June and criminalized the secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign power. A lot of people that I knew wh who were quite vocal before on political issues on social media, I don't read anything from them anymore. The last couple of years, especially because the political climate change, the financial executive said. He records the one Buddhist colleague who had started contributing to the school uh, in Tibet, a restive region of China with the extra government agitating for its autonomy. He says his company took the co colleague aside to ask her to refrain from don donating and keep a low profile on Tibetan matters to avoid causing the firm problems when she represented them in the mainland. It has a chilling effect, he says. He says, but I need to go to China to work. I'm not really concerned about my personal safety. I mean, I'm not a very influential person in terms of the political opinion. Those risk factors of who is influential and worth detaining, detaining might not always be obvious. One Beijing based a business executive, for example, says he believed the risk of traveling to China to be just non-zero, but outlines the certain caveat, which might not be immediately apparent to someone living in the Western democracy. He asked not to be named for security reasons. I know a business guy who used to travel to China quite frequently before the pandemic, and what I have noticed on his link LinkedIn feed is that he had he's been forwarding things from the Apoch Times, he says, referring to the media outlet affil affiliated with the Falun Gong religious movement bond and revived by Chi China's ruling community party. So for now, he better not come. He forwards things from the Apoch Times and that's radioactive. The stu situation can also change swiftly, as often il illustrated during the Trump administration. Last summer, when U.S. authorities arrested four Chinese nationals claiming their, they had lied on their visa applications about their connections to the PLA, Figures in Beijing say that raised say they raised the risk for any U.S. national in China with the previous ties to the U.S. military. It would be fairly easy to find an e equivalent person in China. Just to look on their LinkedIn profile. There's a lot of people that will fit that profile. So, yeah, that made people nervous, the Beijing-based executive says. The chance to understand China is passing. When was strong, the U.S.-China specialist went to graduate school in the early 1980s. It was normal for authors on China to not have 
recently traveled to the country, which for decades had been sealed to foreigners. There was a whole period when the major works in the field in English were produced by people who did their research in Taiwan or interviewed refugees or immigrants in Hong Kong, what Sir Strom said. Just uh, as in some ways, just just as in some ways, Xi Jinping is a throwback to China being a place with a personality cult. What is occurring now in the academic space is a kind of throwback to another time, he added as. As scholars feel less willing to travel there and were finding it harder to access the sensitive sites and groups when they do make it in. Lev Naman, a PhD candidate at UC Irving, or I Ibing, and visiting scholar at National Taiwan University, says undertaking research in China is now a much more complicated goal than it was five or six years ago. A lot of new advice we are getting as graduate student is to do a project that does not require you to necessarily do field work in China, he, he said, because access to ar archive, archives and interviews is difficult. And now we just have to Im imagine that the difficulty has been turned off to 10 along with the cross along with the risk of personal safety last year trump issued the executive order to cancel within china and hong kong the full right exec exchange program which sends some of the brightest u.s mines around the world a particularly striking move given the first right agreement with any nation was signed in Nanjing in eastern China in 1947 before the communists take over the mainland to educate Chinese students in the US. With fewer academics willing to travel to China and those who to make it after the coronavirus pandemic encountering a more closed ch nation. The result could be fewer Western minds reporting. Reporting on a study in China first hand at a time at a time when arguably the world has never had a greater need to understand the country. Wiser Strom adds as that perhaps the newest wrinkle in this China story is it is no longer possible to fear into the mainland from H Hong Kong, where, where academic study and freedom of speech has also been targeted in the past year under the national security law. Recently, Baptist University in Hong Kong cancelled a photography, photography exhibition which featured images, featured images of the local pro-democracy demonstrations due to security concerns. Books by, books by democracy figures have been removed from public library. Now, deemed illegal under the security law. I used to assume that if I couldn't go to mainland, I would just go to Hong Kong more often, says Wazer Strom. And now I feel that actually Hong Kong isn't safe either. U.S. Selena Wong also contributed to this report.